Hello, Deuce. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't remember Deuce, uh, he is rule number one. Don't be a douche. Number one, don't be a douche. That's rule number one. That is rule number one, pretty much in life. Uh, and number two is to uh, work hard. He is weapon school uh, instructor, weapon school graduate, F-16 pilot extraordinaire. Now he's flying Fat Amy. Um, <laughs> we don't talk about that as much. He's a, he's a, no, you don't call it, you don't call it Fat Amy, right? It's the Sex Panther. It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in nine countries. No, the, yeah, just, just the, the Panther. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Or the, uh, the old battle penguin, if you do prefer, I, I suppose you could say. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. No, it's a great chat. So the other day I was thinking, I was reading the comments, as I like to do, and between the ones that are mad, there, there, it, it, there's a theme where people kind of think that when you're a fighter pilot, all you do is, you know, high five, go to the jet. Kick the tires and light the fires, Big Daddy. Come on, talk to us. Where you going, sir? Let's bring it on. Bad boy, come home, you know, drink a couple beers and, and talk about how awesome you are. While we would all love that to be true, <laughs> uh, I think what separates a professional military pilot is brief and debrief. And I thought, who better to help me explain, this is a two-part series, who better to help me explain the importance of a good brief and debrief than someone who spent a lot of time doing both briefs and debriefs. And I, I guess we'll start out. True or false, a sortie can fall apart with a bad brief. Oh, that happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely true. So tell, tell me, Deuce, why is it such a big deal to have a good brief? I mean, the, the whole concept of the brief is like you want to outline, you know, to the members of your forces what exactly is going to happen, the telling of the story, if you will, so that they're prepared uh, airborne for not only the primary plan, but any kind of contingency that arises uh, during the mission. Yeah. So uh, I brought out my old briefing guy <laughs> from, uh, from the days of the upstream. The day, days of your. That's that's usually where you get. You yeah, get like, likely likely stolen from somebody else. Again, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. But so we break it down, right? We don't, you know, we have a flow. We have a way we brief. It's always fairly standard. And it starts with, well, it always starts with what? A good time yeah. hack, right? Yep. Good, uh, good time hack. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, to that's to set the tone really for, hey, like we're a professional organization and here's how we're starting off. It's not so much that you're necessarily like looking at your, your watch, you know, dirt for like, engine start for example but um that's how it starts off and then it flows into yeah. the uh the motherhood which is your you know legally required um by afi items that you need to just get through so you know you do your time hack and then it you know you go down the board you go hey we are you know make a one one flight we're doing dca defensive counter error here are our objectives. We've got mission objectives. Talk to me about the, the mission versus tactical objectives. What are you looking for? Yeah, for that, really, it's like they need to be, you know, something that's quantifiable and measurable for uh, for a debrief. And they really outline what it is that you say you're there to do there. Um, you know, so it kind of cages everybody that wasn't in mission planning. You know, maybe mission planning is something as short as, you know, like an hour or so, or maybe you spent like, two days prior just preparing for this one mission, but you kind of cage your audience, if you will, for what it is you're about to go accomplish. Yeah. So big picture, Hey, we're going to defend this target, but then we're going to measure how we did, did by saying, you know, no friendly losses, specific ways that we can come back to the debrief, which we'll talk about later and say, did we, or did we not, you know, because the boards will typically still be up, right? They'll still be there when you get back and you can check yes or no, did we do that, right? That's right. And I mean, it all depends on what, you know, standard answer, right? It depends. But uh, what is it that the combatant commander wants you to go do? You know, like in Afghanistan, for example, like, hey, support ground force commander's intent with zero blue losses would be like our standard kind of overall objective for the day. Or as you alluded to, uh, defensive counter air, making sure that no strikers get through target doesn't get bombed so at that point you know we go and what you're talking about you know the motherhood and the navy calls it you know admin or whatever but 
we kind of gloss over it sometimes, but motherhood can be a big thing by itself, right? I mean, it can be something that people screw up and, you know, you never, you never even get there. That's right. I mean, you know, I just came back from a conference up at, at Nellis and, you know, there's a recurring theme about motherhood, if you will, or really admin, you know, anytime like you take a squad into war, you know, like your tactics are, are standard, you know, it's assumed like the, the bigger kind of kind of things there are, are the admin, which are quite honestly what gets most people killed. Um, you know, like, where are we going to, where are we going to go? Where's our tankers? Where are our missed refueling bases? You know, those sorts of items are, are really what, you know, for the example from the first night of Libya, that's what we spent the majority of our brief, like talking about was all the, the admin, uh, for example. And it covers everything, you know, what time, when are we going to check in? What times are, you know, our takeoff yeah. time? How are we going to take off? Are we going to do formation takeoff or radar trail departures or, you know, data link stuff? How are we going to get to the airspace? How are we going to get back together, you know, and then all of the special subjects? I mean, what happens if somebody ejects? You know, what happens right. if we go lost calm? <clears throat> like all of that stuff, it can be briefed as standard, which, you know, for those that don't know, what are the standards? Like, what does that what does that mean? It means things that you walk into the brief. Like, you have to have that memorized. You know, in the F sixteen, we had employment standards. They're part of attachment A of three dash one. Then there's your squadron standards, which talk about you know everything that you're talking about. Like, hey, here's how we check in. Here's how we're going to take off. Here's how we're going to recover. And if you're just doing a local area training sortie with um, you know, fighter pilots that are very used to the area, then yeah, absolutely brief those as standard. But if you're doing something like going to war for the first night, then those are definitely items that you're really going to want to cover for that. Yeah. And then getting home too. I mean, so the motherhood is everything that's not tactical. So how are we yep. going to recover? Are we, is the weather going to be bad? Are we going to have to, and that's where we brief weather notums. You know, we talk about all the you know, what's the airfield situation? What's the weather like where we're at? What's the weather like in the airspace? All that stuff that's not how do we kill people and break their things, that's where we talk about about this stuff. What do you think the most important part of the motherhood, you know, in your experience is? I think being able to tailor it to to your audience and what you're going out to do for the day, you know, like whether, you know, like <clears throat> could be the major factor for the day, you know, could be the biggest human factor for um, where you're going to run into issues. Whereas if you're at Nellis, for example, in like 99% of the time, it's clear in a million, you know, motherhood at, at Nellis is, you know, not as nearly as important. I, I think also, you know, going back a step, one thing, the brief changes depending on what you're doing. You know, right. if it's just a two ship, it's a lot different than if it's an LFE. You know, if you're doing a large force exercise, if I'm the blue guy, briefing my 4VX DCA, well, that then I have to brief the mass brief. I've got to brief red air. I've got to tell them, you know, how we're going to fight together, how we're going to get in and out of the airspace, what happens if you're late, all that stuff. Then we break down to our, you know, our, our mission and then our uh, four ship and then our, you know, it, 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 like you, you end up getting a lot more briefs and that's why it takes, what's the average time, about two hours prior? Yeah, about about two hours prior to to when you go, yeah, and then you figure about an hour for ground ops or so. So, yeah, that's pretty pretty typical. You try to break it into motherhood being you know like five six minutes or less, you know, and then any kind of uh, coordination brief that you do before that, you know, try to keep it at ten minutes. So that then you're already up to fifteen minutes, you know, and you're trying to keep your brief to about fifty fifty five minutes. So. You know, time is kind of at a at a premium. Now, as TAC admin, do you consider that something different? Like, uh, you know, just how we're going to set up the fights themselves, or do you just kind of consider that in that in that time for motherhood? No, I consider that separate from motherhood. So your typical brief will start off with you know the time hack, security level objectives. You know, kind of cage the room. Then maybe I go into like one minute on like, hey, big picture. Here's what we're going out to do. Then it's into your motherhood, you know, for like five minutes. Then tech admin, you know, I'll talk to that a few minutes, you know, which could be for uh, basic fighter maneuvers, you know, talking about the setups, particularly if I'm flying with a younger guy, like if it's an MQT kind of flight. Um, and then I go flow into the tactics. And then lastly is going to be uh, my contingencies and then ending it again with your objectives. 
Well, so going to the TAC admin into the tactics, I mean, like you said, depends on who you're flying with, right? If you're flying with a guy that, you know, it's me and you, and we've flown a whole bunch of times together, probably not going to talk very much about how to do BFM. That's an alternate mission, right? We, yeah. we got it. We figured it out. Yeah, that's that's right. You got a brand new lieutenant that's maybe, you know, only done this in the B course and doesn't really, you know, hasn't seen it a whole lot. You might spend a little bit more time going, hey, dude, here's how I want you to set this up between sets because every flight lead, even with standards, right? Every flight lead does it maybe a little different. Yep, that's right. So, I mean, you have what, you, what we call CT training, which is continuation training. And then we got, you know, at one end of it. And then the other end is we're doing upgrade training for maybe it's somebody going through mission qualification training or flight lead or an instructor upgrade. And those briefings are going to be a whole uh, lot more in depth, you know. A CT brief at, at Nellis, you know, between classes when we were doing uh, basic fighter maneuvers was – uh, to get ready for the students for the next class was really just what was legally required, and then a check of the weather, and then, yeah. and then really, really uh, who, who's leading again today? You know, so um, you know that was. But again, you're flying with you know the most uh, highly qualified uh, individuals in the aircraft, so just focusing on what was uh, legally required and what you wanted to work on for for the day. You know, vice mission qualification uh, training kind of sortie. Or a weapons school sort of, you know, you're getting to a lot higher level of detail uh, in that brief. So the the tactical portion leading into that, you know, you're instructing, right? You're telling them, here's how you're going to maneuver your aircraft to do whatever mission we've got today. Yep. Here's what you're going to see. Here's what you're going to to do. So the see, do kind of concept uh, from basic fighter maneuvers is generally what's uh, accepted as standard in fighters. Um, and then being able to take that concept forward with, hey, here's your formation, here's what you're doing with your sensors, here's what you're doing with the comm, you know, during each um, phase of the fight, if you will, to, again, kind of paint that picture and tell a story, uh, if you will, from start to finish for what they're going to do uh, in a particular mission. So how do you, you know, technique-wise keep their eyes from glazing over <laughs> i mean because you're sitting there for a long time i mean how do you balance <laughs> how do you balance you know, the, 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 the desire to teach you know um <laughs> again it's a big it depends you know for for your audience and who you're flying with that day but <laughs> um i mean if you have like a young lieutenant you know for example that's fresh out of the b course right into mqt like they're going to be like more of your captive kind of audience if you will like they're like chomping at the bit notebook open like yeah. writing down every single word that you're saying um you know vice flying with like maybe another two three thousand hour guy who's like yeah okay got it like <laughs> slide let's go fly <laughs> um <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah you have to kind of break it and like know your audience and and know hey like what's their what's their weaknesses maybe what do they need to work on what did their last instructor say or you know you talk to them beforehand hey what'd you do your last flight what do you want to work on today and then that's how you kind yeah. of tailor Tailor your brief for them so that they're not uh, glazing over. But uh, jokes, jocularity are always uh, generally accepted and kind of break things up. <laughs> you know, just kidding on that. But that's valid. But that's also one of the things. You know, I always try to like pick a couple highlights because you can't do everything in the time you have, right? You no. don't have enough time to teach them every single aspect. So you got to pick the highlights and go, "Hey, you already should know this, but remember yeah. these things that are keys to success that might help you." Yeah, particularly with somebody who's going through an, an upgrade, like you talked about, whether it be MQT, flight lead, instructor, weapons school, mission commander upgrade. Like, you're, you're going to do a lot of that. Like, hey, like, here's what you need to know. Like, in academics or what we'll commonly refer to as uh, chalk talk, you know, a day or two, two prior to the actual flight itself. So, again, it just kind of highlights the fact, like, there's a lot of time that goes into what we do. Um, you know, it could be again, like a few days just going into this one flight. And then, you know, I spend, you know, several hours, maybe just focusing on these particular things so that I'm dropping the right knowledge bombs to them in that brief so that we go out in the missions of success. And then we haven't even gotten to the debrief part, part yet too, right. Which could be, uh, be a few oh, hours that, in the making, that, which, you know, yeah. later on in the video we'll, we'll get to, but, um, you know, it, the biggest part as the instructor is knowing your knowing your audience, 
and then knowing what it is that they want to get out of the sortie. So uh, here's the question. Is chalk dead? <laughs> you know, it's, I wouldn't. I think that weapons school paper was written when you and I were lieutenants, right? Somewhere around there, like chalk is, <laughs> yeah, chalk is right. dead. I was so excited. And then I showed it to the brief, was... and it's like, no, you're going to chalk up this debrief. So I was like, oh, I thought it was dead. <gasps> Apparently, it's uh, it's not dead. It's, it's dead. It's it's on life support. They perhaps life. <laughs> I think it's on life support, but it's it's definitely not dead, and it's definitely not letting us pull the plug yet. Guys generally still drawing up in the debrief, at least in the uh, in the F-16 for the flight lead and instructor upgrades. You know, and it's a skill that you need, you know, in case like the tape storm record, you can still get something out of the debrief um, if you don't get the lines, which is what we're getting, getting to. Like the PCDS doesn't work or JET doesn't record it, which it does, doesn't most of the time. So, so, so once you hit, you know, the, the TAC portion you know so whatever mission you're doing right whether it's right. defensive counter air offensive counter air surface attack basis surface, surface attack whatever which i think the f-16 makes that probably the one of the most challenging aircraft because you've got so many different that's why you've got a binder you know full of stuff that you've yeah. got to <laughs> yeah, know that's right. and be yeah. able to brief and teach but so we finished that part what's after the tactical portion of the brief so after the tactical portion of the brief which Again, it's going to be kind of like the meat of your brief, if you will. That's what you actually need to uh, get to a high level. Um, yeah. You know, then you're going to talk about your uh, your contingencies, as in, hey, like, what if these things go wrong? Then what are we going to do instead in order to uh, mitigate so we still win overall for the mission? After that, it's it's questions, right? Questions. Yeah. It's yeah. Time for questions. questions. Now, I think I think that's it. so that that's actually. That's actually a good a good point. I think, you know, especially for younger kids that are, you know, wanting to do this profession, it's not a two-way conversation, right? It's more of a, you know, hey, you wait until somebody asks you if you've got questions. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, there's there's certainly a uh, a level of et- there we go, a level of etiquette that's involved uh, in the brief, which is as a fire pilot in the brief, so you shut up shut up and listen because there, <laughs> there, there's there's a lot that we got to get through and then at opportune points i will stop and see what questions you have on on what's been covered just so that you know everything is clear in your mind but you definitely um shut up until you're asked what questions that you have and usually those points are at logical stopping points right motherhood questions on yeah. the motherhood Tac admin, yeah. questions on the TAC admin, tactical, does, you know, the questions on this. And that's why you should be, you know, taking notes. If you got anything, write it down for so you can refer to it and be like, hey, you said this. Is this what you want me to do? And also, this is a big one. I was bad at this, so don't be me. But when you do ask a question, don't be a know-it-all and ask like a an actual question. Like, well, the standard says just be like, hey, is this what you want me to do? I don't understand. You know, you got to be tactful in how you ask questions. Yeah, don't be a douche. Again, rule number one, don't be a douche. <laughs> valid, valid, valid. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, and, and the, the contingencies part could be its own brief, right? I mean, you could, you could anchor on this, all the what ifs all day long. I mean, do you just pick the highlights in there too? Yeah, I, I tend to get to the highlights there. I mean, if you're spending so so much time on on the contingencies, then there, there's probably something wrong with your game plan. If you have to go down like the bunny trail with a whole <laughs> bunch of like if thens, you know, like you probably need to go back yeah. and then re- revisit what your game plan is for the day if if that's what you're getting to. But I mean, it sure, certainly could be uh, the majority of the brief. You know, if if you're fairly admin centric, like for example, like pond crossing. You know, if you will, just to get jets from point A to point B for like an exercise or an overseas deployment. I mean, that's probably the majority of the brief, like quite honestly, like, hey, like miss refueling bases, you know, like what if you tank, can't take gas, like those kinds of things. Yeah. So once you're done all that, you just go, hey, here's what we're doing. Any last yep. questions? You know, then you should have 10 minutes to go poop. You should. <laughs> A good flight def- will give you 10 minutes. I definitely need some uh, some TTP, which is time to poop uh, before step. Yeah, well, that that is one of the keys to mission success. If we're being completely honest here, 
Um, you know, something else to consider too is just the, Hey, what's the difference between like the, like a mission qualification training briefing, flight lead level briefing, instructor, WIC, um, truly for like mission qualification training, you know, that's, that's an instructional brief. You know, I'm instructing you like left hand, right hand, you know, kind of like we talked about what you're going to do a flight lead. So an upgrading flight lead, what I expect for them is to be able to convey the game plan uh, logically and uh, safely for what you're going to go out to do without, you know, completely going to crazy town. And then instructional, an, an IPUG, <laughs> <laughs> an, an IPUG brief is, you know, being able to uh, instruct, you know, the young um, pilots that are going through mission qualification training. So getting to a, a more higher level of detail uh, for instruction is how I think about that. And then the difference between an, an IPUG level brief and a WIC level brief is just uh, an even higher level of uh, precision of language and precision of what you are incorporating into the brief uh, for the day. And the other thing I will say is when you're in a large force employment, because I did this a lot as Red Air, mm. do not, if you are an element lead or a flight lead of a sub category and the alternate mission commander, do not micro nap through the whole plan because the <laughs> odds are very, very high <laughs> that the flight, the mission commander will fall out and hand it to you, and you will have no idea trying to read the card going, what were we doing? What was the plan? <laughs> well, that, that leads, uh, leads to a good segue there, Mover. So, uh, you know, one of the things for, like, a four-ship kind of missionized ride, whether it be, you know, seed or defensive counter air, I'm primarily briefing my number three, like my, my deputy flight lead, uh, if you will, for, like, what that plan is. You know, like you could be at like at weapon school, for example, like generally like you were the one planning, you know, the day prior is number one where number three was flying that day. So like they show up not knowing what, what you talked about the day prior and you have to convey to them like what the game plan is, A, so that they can execute, B, if you fall out now they're not stuck like, I don't know what to do with my hands, you know, uh, kind of thing. And then I bring in <laughs> two and four with, with the contracts. Uh, you know, for how they're going to execute and how they're going to bring their their sensors and their weapons and their gas to the fight and what they're going to do with those. Um, that's how I think about it overall for like a four ship kind of little brief. And then, you know, the next level kind of brief is, you know, large force employment, you know, like say you're at like Red Flag or Northern Lightning. Now you're talking about like overall like mission flow and how the different um, packages, if you will, are going to, to fit in, you know, whether it be, um, OCA, uh, escort, OCA seed, um, how AI and everybody else is going to C2 are going to play in, uh, together. So again, it goes back to knowing your audience and then having that vision for, for what the mission flow is going to be for a particular day. But that concept still holds true. Knowing the capabilities of every, you know, package, so to speak, out there, right? You got to know what the Strike Eagles can do. You got to know what the Brits are bringing to the table. You've got all the different yep. things that you're bringing in that you're going to have to know how to work. Yeah, and that that baseline knowledge you need to have down, like even before you step into mission planning. So there's there's a high level of knowledge that you have to have even before you mission plan, and even before you develop your brief um, that needs to be assumed. So that's a lot of even more time spent in the vault, spent studying, talking to other fighter pilots um, and individuals for um, getting that up to where you need to be. Well, and that sets the tone for the sortie. If you're a student on an upgrade ride, you know, if you show up to the brief prepared, you know all the material, and when they ask you questions, you can immediately answer, especially stuff that you should know. It sets the tone. You get that halo effect for the rest of the mission. Yeah, there is a high level of personal responsibility that's involved with being a fighter pilot and, uh, you know, time spent in the vault studying, getting ready. All right. So anything else on briefing before we uh, end this one and talk about debriefing in the next Questions on the brief. <laughs> that's in the next I, one. <laughs> I don't know what to ask here. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands right now. <laughs> no, I, I have no other questions. All right. Thanks, Deuce. We'll see you on the next video.